Hello everyone, welcome back to the podcast in this uh, series for Autism Awareness Month called Autistic Assemble Um, and today I'm joined with Lola and we're going to be speaking about autism, we're going to be speaking about lots of different things as well, Um, our hobbies, um, which just before we learned that we like something very much the same (laughs) before we started, but we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But before we talk about anything, uh, Lola, I've asked you to introduce yourself, that'd be great. Yeah. Hi, I'm Lola. I mean, I'm autistic. Obviously, that's why I'm here. I'm an actress and I'm a writer and I'm currently making the first, I'd probably say, British autistic TV series. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, um, Are you allowed to talk about any of that or does that have to be top secret? Um, I think I'm allowed to talk about it. I mean, I never know until I've already said things and then I get wrong. So I'd say yeah. um, it's nothing like out there um it's you definitely unique because it's based on my own experiences of school and what I was like undiagnosed and leading up to diagnosis um it's got some very special moments in there and it's a school drama because I didn't say that either and it's set in the northeast which is where I'm from and Mm. it's pretty special I'm just thinking of like one specific moment which I'm not even allowed to say it does a lot of rewrites but I'm filming it in the summer if my men- mental health actually balances itself out I'm kind of excited because there's nothing better than doing something to change yeah. views I guess and to just try and create some acceptance I think that's a really good idea because you don't see many things out there I know there's lots of things out there maybe television series and stuff like that about autism but they're not always accepting like that like really are they not that great but um yeah it, it's, it's 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 really good that you're doing that yeah I mean I kind of the series that I've wrote ironically I wrote it way before I even like knew about autism in a way like I had no idea but I did my friends it's like it was written on my head because they knew before I even came to the conclusion that I wasn't any different if that makes sense mm-hmm. I'd yeah so I mean in like 2020 after all of the drama went down with like Sia it kind of got that fighting spirit and I was like I'm gonna do something about it I was like I'm gonna yeah so I went back into my history and decided that's it that's the story that needs telling yeah it must take it a while though to get like 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 write it and everything I would say not in my case because I kind of already had the template from the original because I always keep probably most of my drafts and I was like okay let's just boss it out that's what I do like if I have that idea there it is it's done it can be done in an hour sometimes I mean the hardest part is giving it to somebody else to try and get it made because you've got to kind of compromise and I've compromised quite a bit on my ideas but I'm hoping that it's still the same and it still has the same impact that just totally will make people cry because it makes me cry sometimes yeah so so are you so you're going to start like filming it in in the summer yeah I mean it was supposed to be the end of February but it had to be delayed so yeah I mean I'm hmm, I don't know what I don't know how to feel about it I'm kind of nervous yeah it's normal to be nervous like if you're doing anything with acting um like it's it's it, uh, like it's good that you're doing it like as a person who's autistic yourself um because um I always feel like when people act like in like things maybe to express yourself if, if you're doing something about your own kind of autistic journey in a way you you you, you want to do it yourself and you don't want anyone else to do your part Yeah, I mean, a lot of the thought has came across my mind a few times. I've given it to somebody else. I just don't think that, like, if I look back, I'm going to regret it if I give it to somebody else. Whereas, like, obviously, I know myself, I know my journey, and I know, like, how to do it justice in a way that somebody else probably couldn't. So I'm, like, at that advantage rather than somebody else just coming in and taking the role because they'd have to, like, learn every single thing which is just way too hard but I'm kind of it's it's hard because there's some things that I can really like I'm really good at but then there's some things that I'm not and learning lines yeah that's gonna be a bit of a challenge (laughs) yeah learning lines is tricky like you watch people on telly it's like they they do it easy um 
but don't they like like let, let's talk about David Tennant for example maybe in Doctor Who as a doctor like um it does it so easy like he he, he says Alonzi Alonso and then it it seems simple but it's very hard yeah yeah I mean he's probably more used to it than out like um mm. um yeah it's just easier for some people but I would hate to like the scripts like Doctor Who's I've read over them in the past. And it is so like action based that there's just paragraphs and paragraphs of stage directions in there. Like that makes it so much harder trying to remember all of that and then lines on top. I could never. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's crazy, like how like so, sometimes if I'm acting out a scene and I wanna and like maybe when I've done it and I wanna write, I wanna write out some what I've said. I go to like the transcript on the internet and I, and I read it and it, like there's so much lines and like it's it's like the, I think the writers and every any, anything really have a really hard job because I think Doctor Who is one of the hardest things to write. Yeah I would definitely agree I mean like as a fan you kind of think I could definitely write that but then like sometimes when you just look at it you're like yeah that was that was one of them thoughts that I should just you know I mean, I come across that, that many thoughts. I was like, the other week, I'm like, I'm going to write an X-Files spin-off. <laughs> so I started writing and I'm like, this is really hard. <laughs> so yeah. I've kind of left it in my drafts. Yeah, it's, it is hard to to write, um, but I get distracted easily. So I, I, I have to listen to some, some sort of music. I always put Doctor Who's Mitzif, uh, um, soundtrack if I'm writing anything. Um and if that's not in the background, I don't know. I, I, I just won't do it because I'm that distracted of thinking about someone else what I'm going to do in the, in the day or something. Yeah, that's what usually really, like, it just happens. You get so distracted. I mean, in exact same time as writing, and then I'll potentially maybe have, like, music on in the background, or I'll be scrolling at the same time. It's just absolute chaos. I just never know what I'm supposed to do. But if it's, like, a really good day, then I'll... I'll just be doing one thing. I'm yeah. just so used to multitasking. <laughs> yeah, it's, it depends, like, I guess, what it is you're writing as well. Yeah, I mean, the worst part, I would say, of writing is if you're writing something that needs loads of research because you're just constantly flicking from one thing to another all the time. And, yeah, I mean, I've been experiencing that recently because I've wrote a short film well, I'm still writing it, even though I promised it would be finished like last week. But yeah, <laughs> it's very complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, it's good. It, it's good to like doing all this, but it's hard work. Yeah, it really is hard. You just have to kind of surround yourself by people who are like, go on, you could do it, you could do it, and just do your own. Otherwise, you're kind of like, I think I'm just going to give up. And if there's no one there to tell you otherwise, you're just like, yeah. Bye. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. Like, like um, so, so I guess the short you do it, even if you do a short film, you might have to write loads and like if you're having people doing it in with you, like you have to give them the the role, and it's it's really hard work. Um, but if it's something you enjoy, it's 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 it's, it's a hobby and you enjoy it. It's, it's, it's you're you're doing it because it's fun, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the hardest part I would say would have to be casting. Like, I had it a casting day in December, and oh, like, I didn't recover for three days because it just was so chaotic at times. But the week before, that was even worse. Like, it's just constantly so full on that if you hear a ping, you're like, oh, here we go again. What's this? It just, it can kill your like mentality. It just like, yeah. And then, and then yeah. uh, if you cast uh, one person for something and they want the other part, they'll be like, oh, why are you giving me that part? <laughs> yeah, um, it happens, surprisingly. I haven't come across that yet, hopefully. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Um, but I, I was like that when I, at school, I I did, I was in a, doing a drama course and I, I, I was nearly going to be the main character and then I was the, the, uh, the mic role character. Which mm-hmm. was probably a better character because more than one person. Um, yeah. So I, I, I was gonna, I, I, for a period, I was practicing the lines of the main character, and then I, I wasn't. Well, it wasn't for a very long, probably a day, and then like I swapped over, and I was like, 
well, <laughs> I'm not the main yeah. character no more. And then it happens yeah. a lot. Yeah, surprisingly, I never even got a chance to get anywhere near a main role. It was kind of like a hierarchy because I'd done like I went to like a drama academy on every weekend, apart from during the summer because it like it never was on during the summer. But it was like the favourites and the favourites got to do every single thing. And if you weren't in that like little category of the most popular ones, you just never got to, you never even got a chance. You didn't even get to see anything, really. It was a shame. I mean, I did get like a few solos in singing, but that was about it. Yeah, I had to do some dancing, I remember, and I was awful. And it was like the old style dancing they did back years ago and uh, I, I, I didn't have a clue. I had to get taught to do it and stuff, so it was pretty funny. Oh, I love dancing like that. I love, like, the old style, like, Charleston. That was one of the first dance routines I actually learned in school. And then you've got, like, others going into it. You've got, like, the twist going into, like, 50s, 60s. Yeah, I love it. Like, I just... Yeah, it's it's, it's crazy. It's, 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 it's crazy all this stuff you learn while doing different acting things and and stuff is it's, it's, it's good fun yeah I'm kind of self-taught in a way I would say because I didn't necessarily learn anything beneficial back then it was more like the light here they're like oh you're so good but then they won't tell you like anything and you're like this is a bit weird why they're always praising you and then as soon as like it came to anything else you're just discarded and I just taught myself everything that I've ever known. I just try my best. I mean, my accents are kind of getting on point now, and it's very, very freaky. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really interesting how people uh, actors do that. Like they change a- accents for different things. I think I think it's really cool. Yeah, I think one of the best examples of changing of accents. It's all behind us, Gillian Anderson. Although she is American, she moved here to the UK when she was a kid. And yeah, her accent is, she has two accents. So like every time that she's in America, she's doing the American and then British. It just depends on interviews. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, I don't know how she keeps up because there's some interviews I've seen and I'm like, oops, I can hear the accent, the other one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is really interesting. I guess like people ask people to do the accent they want them to do or that they can try and do it at least. Um, see if it's any good. <laughs> yeah, I always switch over. I used to do all of these live streams and mostly it was an American audience and they didn't understand us. So there was this time and everyone kept joining and I'm just like, okay, let's just speak a different accent. I was like, oh, hey, everyone. Um yeah, I'm Lola, and they're like, oh, you're from America. I'm like, no. I'm like, I'm British, and they're like, stop lying, and I'm like, yeah. no, I'm not lying. <laughs> I'm actually British, and they're like, what are you saying? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I was like, I guess I'm just stuck speaking in an accent then for the rest of the time. Yeah. Uh-huh. It, it, I guess it, 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 it's, it's so cool, because like, like, like you just doing that and I've heard uh, American people do like um uh like an English accent for Rose Tyler and Doctor Who. Um mm. which is it's, it's quite interesting. Like you you wouldn't know <laughs> that they're from mm. America or probably you wouldn't know you're from England like England and that uh, <laughs> so it's 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 a cool skill to have. Yeah, I mean it comes in handy a lot of the time because when you develop and see a character, you kind of think about how they're actually going to say things. And in one, I'm going to give an example of my pilot because there is a voiceover at the beginning and I thought of the most perfect combination. And she's like, oh, I think this. everyone thinks because we go to private school that we're all rich with silver spoons, but MCA is different. You'll see like the little switch up at the end. People are like, oh, okay, that's a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, it's it like it's really cool. Like I, I can do that. Like I could, I can, like I've done very bad at accents. Like I, I, I can take stuff off sometimes, but um, I don't know. I sound like a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. For me, I end up taking like all these skills and I'll try and mimic people. And that's the way I learned. I mean, if you 
look at like certain words and adapt them. So like I learned to use like the New York accent. That was one of the first accents I ever learned. And it's because if you say no and York together, no York, and then you end up with that. Wow. <laughs> that, 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 that that's really interesting. Yeah, it was one of the, like, apparently if you say, in American accent, if you say space ghettos, space ghettos, Scottish. Yeah. <laughs> like, logic. Yeah. yeah, so if you are to Scotland, you know, you, you, you could just say, I'm, I'm Scottish. <laughs> oh. I could never, like, yeah. I could, that's one accent I can't. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's it, like, 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 when I first watched Doctor Who, um, and when I was younger, and I found out later on that David Tennant's actually Scottish, and I thought, what? Because, yeah, it's, yeah, it's weird how he has to tone his accent down. They really, like, in, I feel like a long time ago, they really didn't like, like, Northern, in a way. Like, I, this is just like, they're like, oh, Northern. Like, I feel like there's such a divide at times on, like, certain things. Yeah. But yeah, it's kind of branched out, I would say. Yeah. There's a lot of Scottish actors in the show and there's like you got I think that the ninth doctor is like Northern. Well supposed to be a Northern Doctor anyway. Um yeah. and then yeah, uh, like it it's it it's it is crazy, like when people have to do these different accents, but it suits the role I guess. Um because if you heard David Tennant speaking the Scottish accent as a doctor, you'd think, yeah, that won't that work now. It just, it would sound really strange. Yeah. It really would. I mean, I've watched him in Broadchurch and his accent was really thick on that, so. Yeah, definitely. And like, I think if he was allowed once, I think in that Tooth and Claw episode where he he had to speak Scottish for a brief few seconds. For mm. a few lines, which I thought he was in his element there because he could speak his actual his language. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot easier, I would say, to speak your own accent because you've got to kind of, you know, try and keep on accent and also like remember everything else. It's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I think because you've got the new Doctor Who now, shooty, he's Scottish as well. So mm. you've got, you, they like the Scottish, I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for shooty. Like I absolutely love him in sex education. Yeah, I I can I hope I hope they make him like serious and or, as well as like like banterish as well because he's really good at his banter. And yeah, I feel like he's gonna bring a lot of what he has in sex education for Eric across just by like what the hell is going on like that just that give Eric vibes. Yeah. As soon as he was announced, I was like, Eric, that's all I thought. I didn't think anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's it's very exciting, like, like they're doing that. And, like, I think um, Doctor Who is very impactful with people who are autistic as well. Yeah. I feel like it's just because it's different and it's normalising being different in a way. And that's what kind of helps everyone else, really. Definitely. And it is, it, like... You can really like it, it, like it, like in di- different situations when you watch it, and like maybe the stuff maybe people who are autistic will do as well. Um, like, um, maybe uh, with the 30th Doctor, for example, she's not very, she's socially like she's quite awkward sometimes, and like some, some bits from the doctors, um, like maybe the 11th Doctor with flapping his hands when he speaks like maybe uh, autistic people do that so there, there, there's certain uh, instances that stuff happens in there that comes across maybe um the stuff autistic people do yeah i've i've figured out like a lot of things recently so i've completed the x files and i mean like i completed it so fast like i don't think i've ever done so many seasons so fast and i'm like I'm like, yeah, definitely autistic, like 100%. And definitely ADHD as well. Like, I'm just like, that is so coded. And then I'm like, I wonder if there's others. And then when I watch other shows, I'm like, yep, there's another one and another one. There's, they always seem to be coded, but they're never actually labelled as that, which is just like, yeah, who are you trying to fool in a way? Like, yeah. you can see it. Yeah, I think it's good though that they don't 
like like mentioned that they they are like if if they like in the show they're not I guess trying to do that but if they did say that I, I don't know if they like especially in Doctor Who I, I, um because the time traveler is like an alien and like and it will maybe come across just maybe some people as offensive if if that was the case but like like I always talk about it like because I I, I relate to certain instances and and stuff um mm-hmm. well, I've got a blue box so there you go <laughs> yeah. um but yeah it's it's really interesting when, it, any show like Wednesday's had a good like Wednesday show had a good kind of like, lot of response from people who are autistic as well yeah I noticed that and then I've seen loads of TikToks on the opposite side of it saying like why are people trying to push the narrative yeah. like really like why just let people just you know yeah yeah it's it's it's, it's it, it I guess you always get people who uh we don't like it or it's like anything um not everyone's going to be the same which is good but i guess people should try to be respectful of people's opinions yeah i mean there's some opinions i would say you can't exactly respect but then others mm. you can yeah like i agree and like with wednesday i like uh, until people actually talked about it, I, I didn't really think of any of that <laughs> until I, I don't know who the first person was, but um, yeah, I, I didn't think about it. Until I, I watched it again and I was like, oh, oh yeah, like um, that that makes sense because especially one of the scenes where Wednesday was in the room and lots of people when exited because it was too many people and I I I. I can relate to that as well because I, I'm, I'm not one for big crowds or um I say that I like I like going to football games but mm-hmm. that's different or well, it's hard for people to understand so I, I might like to go to a football match but if there are loads of people really close I won't um so it's 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 very it's it's, it's interesting but it's good when people relate to stuff like X Men or Doctor Who or, or Wednesday or or something else mm-hmm. yeah I mean. I don't really relate to anything at the moment. Like, I just, I'm a bit lost. So, like, if I can find something to help us pass the time by, then I'll just, you know, I'll follow that lead. But, yeah, it's a very confusing time for us. Yeah. Yeah. It's 2023 already. I still can't believe it. I know. I can't either. But at the same time, I'm like, wow. I'm like, this amount of time has gone by and I couldn't exactly, like, do what I wanted with my life, which so. Mm. Yeah. there's lots of barriers isn't there like with, with stuff that happens yeah mostly mine is because of like the undiagnosed BPD which god I just I want to be diagnosed already but the it just takes forever yeah yeah it's it's it's, it's annoying when you don't get diagnosed or something or it takes a while um for you to get diagnosed yeah like like I don't know if this sounds bad but like autism wouldn't like it doesn't it's never really impacted us as much as like say anything else whereas this it's like an absolute killer and I would have rather like been diagnosed with that first than and autism last in a way Mm. because then I would have probably been took a lot more seriously than I am and yeah yeah, it's just like it's horrible (laughs) Yeah. I just, yeah, it's just like it's blocking the autism off. That's the thing. It's just like it's came in and it's just destroyed everything. Yeah, and it's just sad because my autism had all of these amazing things that it gave us that have now been kind of wiped out completely. Yeah, like so, with your um, autism. Was when 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 was you diagnosed with autism? Um, I got my letter one day before eighteen, but I had loads of. I think the first appointment I had for like towards diagnosis was when I was fourteen, and then nothing. Like we never heard for ages, and yeah. then my school ended up referring us for a second time because my school had an autism unit, so they kept like referring us and referring us until like it actually did something. And then it just like started going on from there. But apparently someone observed us in college and to try and like towards diagnosis. And I had no idea. Like I had 
like I had no awareness of anything of like anybody else I was always just in my own world so yeah not a bad thing to be in your own world <laughs> yeah it's a lot nicer I would say <laughs> yeah yeah and I, I always just it, I remember in school because I would if we read in a book in class I would daydream because mm. I wouldn't pay attention it, especially if it's like a, a book where I'm not interested <laughs> or there's lots of writing and, and you know in class where people would just read and you get told you can read that line and then I, I'd be like I forgot where I am or what page are we on and they're, they're like it. five pages ahead and I'm on page 21 they're on page 28 <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, like, despised when it was, like, your turn to read. I'm, like, I literally got my mom to write as a note at one point to say that I am not reading out. Because I'm really bad at reading. Like, I can't. I can't do it. I can I can probably read it, but then it makes no sense. So, like, yeah. well, APD, basically. And it sucks because I can't read books. Like, my wardrobe is full of books that people have bought us, and I've tried as, like, hard as I can to actually read them, but... It's not getting anywhere. So I've got Audible now and Audible's decent. I've gone through five books. I'm like so proud. Yeah, Audible is very better than uh, reading it. Like, because it's almost like you talk to yourself, isn't it? Like when you're, if you're reading it and yeah, it's just, I'll do it. Maybe if I'm reading a Doctor Who calendar quote each day mm. or so, that's simple. But yeah, yeah um, I'll read it like, um, like I had an autism book that well I, like um that has a lot of autism stuff in it. I'll read stuff that's like beneficial, but I'll try, but I'm always distracted. Yeah. I mean, I'll probably like I'll try and read things. I mean, I don't even read my own work. Like I just can't. I'll do it if I have to, like preferably like last minute when I've got no choice what to do. Yeah, apart from that, my friend, I always send my friend all my work, or he'll just take it anyway. Like, that's what he does. He just, he's like, I've read it like eight times. I'm like, You are? You've read it eight times? I haven't even read it. So, luckily, he does the job for us. Yeah, it's good that you've got someone to do it. Yeah, because I definitely don't want to be in that position. No. <laughs> no. But, but yeah, like, I was. I was diagnosed um, with autism when I was nine. And the reason for that was, um, like, I had no clue what it was at the time. And what happened was, is I, I um, you know, when you're younger and you had all these, like, like the car mat and stuff. And mm -hmm. I, I would always line up all the colours the same. And it was the same with a lot of things. I would always pick the same colours and I think that led to my diagnosis and I and I struggled in education as well mm -hmm. uh, so I moved around quite a bit um and I where well, teachers didn't understand stuff so that I was I was it was wasn't a long diagnosis um mm -hmm. pretty fast but um I know how annoying it is anything like if you have to wait for any diagnosis it doesn't have to be autism it can be like um the the, the um the one that you want to get diagnosed with more so now yeah uh... that's in april for me luckily i got a call like one day i got a call saying that my appointment was going to be july and i was like july i'm like are they joking because i was like i don't want to use an, like i've lost so much time to like mental illness that i don't want to lose even more of my life mm -hmm. and then i got a call the next day saying that it's moved up to april because it was a cancellation i was like yeah, I was like, that's so good. But what am I supposed to do in the meantime? And they're just like, well, you can call the crisis team if you need help at any point. And I'm like, yeah, great. The amount of times I've called the crisis team is ridiculous because my thoughts, this is the thing that I say them my thoughts, but they are not because I know that I would never treat myself the way it's treating me. It, it's honestly like a demon's possessed us in a way. Mm. It's just... Yeah, so like today, I mean, I've been ill for the last four days, I would say. And it can just like, if I'm ill in any way, or like say that there's another chemical in my body, it triggers it so bad to the point like I've got delusions like badly, like they will 
attackers so bad. Even the things I love will start attacking us. And then it turns into hallucinations, like, really badly. Like, my friend, he stayed on the phone with us for three hours during the, like, it was the middle of the night. And that was my worst episode that I'd had, I think. Or, like, second of worst. And I was typing on an invisible phone. Like, I was just sitting there typing away to nothing. Like, it just, it gets so bad that, like, I wouldn't wish it on anyone because it's actual torture. And there's nothing you can do about it. I've been told, oh, do all these strategies. None of them worked. Like, in my last episode, which was, like, three days ago, I took that advice and I was like, okay, let's do this. Let's listen to music. Let's try and, like, Audible, because Audible helped the last time. It stopped it going full on psychotic. And it triggered us. It triggered us so badly. And I think it's because the thing that was also setting it off which came from nowhere was my obsession with tv shows and ironically the actor from the tv show it's his book and it's reading it out to us and then I'm getting triggered over that and I'm like I love that show why are you doing that to us it's just it's illogical there's no yeah yeah it's just it's horrible (laughs) yeah doesn't sound great Um... yeah like I could for example I, I can tell on a night usually what the next day is going to be like and it switches like majorly so like if I feel like on a night that I just want to run a marathon that means I'm going to be in euphoria which is like what it's called it's kind of like mania Um, that's when I know that there's a good day and it's kind of a relief but if I could start getting triggered by absolutely nothing that's when I know bad stuff's coming and it's not nice but I've noticed I've kind of started splitting and I didn't know this was a thing where you're kind of in two minds at the same time, where you're like, oh, that's so good. Oh, I hate that. that. Like, you're just two opposites at once. And it's just, it's not very good because I've put this on everyone and I don't want to be the one to, like, ruin everyone's life because I feel like I've done that enough. Mm. And is this, like, impacted from the BDB? Is, is that how you say it? It's um called borderline personality yeah. disorder. They would say it's more like an emotional disorder, but it kind of affects your personality because you tend to take it from other people, which I've always done. I mean, my friend, she called it. She was like, she said, I've always thought you had a personality disorder. And I'm like, oh, how was she right every time? They say that you need five out of nine things to get diagnosed with it. And I got told when I was on the phone to the crisis team to actually look into that specifically for diagnosis. And I have all nine. And I'm like, how did anybody actually miss this for so long? But, yeah, it's just like one thing that I'm going to kind of campaign for, I think, this year is for GPs to actually have knowledge on mental health issues. Because in society, when a lot of people are struggling, like they're just getting dismissed because there's no knowledge there to even help someone. And yeah. it's just wrong. And it's killing people off, like because there's there's no access to help because they're not took seriously enough. Like I got told multiple times, like, it's just your anxiety, it's just your autism. I knew, like I knew inside that it wasn't that because I've never had issues with them like this. And I've I've had a fight for it for an entire year and I got lied to about referrals and things like that. They went, oh, we've referred you to this place. And then they're like, come back in four weeks. So four weeks happens. Oh, have you heard back? Oh, couldn't get in touch with anyone. I'm like, what? Like, you can't get in touch with anyone. My cousin actually is a mental health nurse. So I rang him straight off and he helped us he was like refer yourself so I did and that's how I've kind of got to where I am but it's no better in a way because I just don't know what I expect and I'm scared that it's going to get worse not better but I've been prescribed new antidepressants and I've been on like four antidepressants since 2018 two of them absolutely destructive and destroyed everything I had to quit my job I just couldn't do anything I just lost all of Avail- like availability to like function like there was nothing in my head it just was like nothing it was just a load of nothing going on um and I'm going to ace the telepram which is just like a, a developed version of 
citalopram, which I was on in the first place. So it's going to arrive in the next few days. And I'm praying for a miracle because the last ones, every single one is induced psychosis in a way. And I don't want that. Like I'm sick of being scared by myself because I don't want to just be like, I want to die and just like, because I can't, like, no, there's no judgment there. There's no judgment to like say no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, scary. I, I, yeah, definitely. Very scary. I, 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 fingers crossed it helps. Um, And I, I completely agree what, what what you're saying about like the GPs need like uh, knowledge about different things like mental health and stuff because like uh you go to these places and like i've uh, like they ask how you're doing it and you maybe you're saying you're talking in a mentally um way and and, and they don't understand that they're thinking you're talking maybe about something else and then they, they don't understand it they don't know really what to say and um it's, it's really hard which i completely agree like nurses um consultants uh GPs, I think all of them need training or or just knowledge. It's it's like a human thing, isn't it? Yeah. Like that stuff. Yeah. Ironically, in one of my appointments, which was just with the nurse, and I think she's a nurse practitioner, if I'm not wrong, and she just she was asking us in detail, and she thought bipolar, but because bipolar is so similar to BPD, that I was like, I'm like, wait, I'm like, what is that? So like, I went in the car, and I'm like, I like start researching, and I'm like. I'm like kind of I'm like not all of it but some of it and stuff and I'm like oh strange but they wouldn't even refer us for that so and that's the huge delay that somebody raised concerns about it and got dismissed themselves essentially there's just like a hierarchy and mm. I think everyone who says they've got mental health issues they just got automatically labeled with like anxiety or depression like, I am not depressed because the only reason I'm depressed is because I have all these things that are not mine. And they're just kind of, they're just going to be like, blame this, blame that. I'm like, I can't even be bothered anymore. I just want to try and get my life back on track and be grounded. And yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed it all works out. And I think because it's, 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 it's annoying when things like people don't understand and. I know I've explained half a dozen things a million times to people and still don't understand, but it's hard. It's it's hard. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're going to, especially appointments and you, you felt like you, maybe you're seeing someone different than you saw before, but you still got to explain exactly the same thing um, and stuff. And it's annoying when people don't put uh, maybe your kind of notes uh, it, like on maybe the system and stuff sometimes. And, and then you go to this person and, say, and they have nothing, no idea, nothing about you. Or and stuff like that, so it's very hard and annoying, but um, sometimes you might not stay calm because it just gets so to you and really annoying. Yeah, I mean, I've got a few videos on my TikTok of that day when I got told that I wasn't going to get a referral, and it just was bad, it was just so bad. I see the mental health nurse, I think it's once a month on a Friday and she's kind of putting she's the only one who has access to the system of like the place that I'm getting diagnosed at so like she was like oh do your entire history like when I was losing my entire mind that's when I decided to do the entire history like like damn I am crazy like who just like when they're absolutely psychotic who decides to just like I'm just gonna get my notebook or I'm gonna get my ipad out and I'm gonna write all this stuff like it's it's a weird one because it at the same time as it's been like very crazy the weird thing is uh, when I was in that kind of phase in the last few nights I'm like wow I'm like these are my repressed memories some of my repressed memories started coming back and I'm like wow I'm like I could cry but at the same time what what does it take just to like you know get things back yeah yeah I don't, I don't, that is weird if, if people are getting out iPads and notebooks to write things down. <laughs> um, yeah, cause... it's a very crazy one. I mean, probably not the worst thing that I could have done. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it, kind it, of fun, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um, but yeah, it's 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 it's, it's just annoying sometimes, like talking 
about things like it, even if you go to like autism like you're just repeating it like a lot, a lot of people find it like with any diagnosis or um eventually hopefully in april when you do um mm -hmm. um get diagnosed um uh but it's it's an easy pro what well, is it an easier process for getting diagnosed mm -hmm. and getting seen for the appointments and stuff than maybe it has been in, in the past yeah, I'm hoping that it's going to be quite simple because obviously I've wrote up my history, so they probably have access to that. So that means I don't have to just like talk too much, but I'm worried in case the new meds I'm put on starts to like hide all the issues and then I'm back to the start again. But I'm really hoping that it's not. I'm just hoping that it's a bad day, ironically. I'd rather it be a bad day so then they can actually see how bad it is rather than a good day because a good day you can't tell anything. Like I, I just people wouldn't have a clue yeah, yeah. so much behind like closed doors people don't see yeah definitely i mean you kind of think like you're the only one experiencing things but then you've got second hand of like everyone around you experiencing and it's sad because you're just like i can't believe i'm doing this like I'm like putting mental health issues to them and then they're getting like anxiety about things and it's quite sad but um, yeah it's nothing yeah. I can really do I just try and bottle it up in a way but also not yeah yeah, yeah it's sometimes you feel like doing that and then I guess it depends on your mood or how, how you're feeling yeah I mean, on the days where I'd say to Euphoria, I can't feel, like, any bad emotions, like, nothing whatsoever. Like, I don't feel anxiety. I don't feel, like, anything, really. I, I, I feel, like, probably excited. And I get triggered by random things. And I'm like, oh, I was like, I love this. And then I'm, like, randomly singing. I'm like, oh, here we go. And it's kind of embarrassing. But it's also good at the same time because it's a relief to have some kind of day where it's, decent enough yeah yeah it's 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 good when you have a, a better day then maybe a not so good day because you maybe you feel better to talk to people even though it, it depends who you're speaking to because asking them for, if you go to the appointment they ask like you loads of questions it's it's really hard um mm -hmm. to answer them all um because like it, you you want to take time answering them one and then you you finish that and then you just process it and what you said and then they ask you another one and another one yeah one thing i don't like though is like the way things go is like when somebody tries to tell you about your own condition and you're like what like i'm living with it and no that's not relevant that's not relevant <laughs> and it's just like I know what I'm going through. Like, I'm not some stereotype or some checklist online. Yeah. It's, it's sad that they kind of do things that way where they'll just go off a checklist about, like, certain issues and, like, certain, like, disabilities and just, like, really. Like, it's better to just ask about it. Ask the person that's going through it. Definitely. Like, yeah. I feel like there's not a lot of, like, people wanting to know like about things anymore like they just rather push it off yeah. too much work i would say <laughs> yeah I definitely and like you go to these things and um people maybe who are trained in the condition that they they might say like that's rare for you to have that along with it and yeah things can be rare but it doesn't mean they're not impossible yeah it's just like there's so much stuff and it just comes to like down to like ignorance in a way because you've got people telling people like oh no you can't possibly have that and you're like where do you get off seeing that like where's your degree where's all this do you suffer of course not like it yeah. just it shows yeah it definitely does and and like especially with acting um which is like um i need your really but um the way a lot of autistic people to find it hard, I guess, to get the correct job in a way because with with with, with it you you want you want to be accepted, like if you can't be there all the time or you have to have time with time out or you just want to have a little break um for for some reason um you don't want to be judged because of that or um and stuff like that it's, it, it's hard 
Yeah, I mean, I've the last job I had was retail and it was horrible. Like it was fine for a long time, but then when stuff started declining and it just was they were like, Oh, you have to cover all these shifts and there wasn't enough of us to cover and it kind of got dumped on me and it just sank. Like I just kept sinking and sinking. And there was days where I literally couldn't stand. I couldn't stand at all. And I was numb. And it was just like, well, nobody else can cover. So you just expected. And like, what? Like, just because it's not visible doesn't mean it's not happening. And yeah, in the end, I ended up quitting because I'd had enough. And I got told, you should be lucky you had a job despite your autism. And then the other side of it, oh I wouldn't hire someone who was autistic like mm. what like that is like so bad like you could literally get sued over that if it was ever recorded but yeah, yeah. it's it's horrible isn't it like hearing that and like it's, it's still I can't believe like it's still going on now because half a dozen years it's the same thing um like um it's, it's, I think the only way you may get accepted is you've actually... Uh, it's better... I guess it's better if you go somewhere that no one knows of autism, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Because um, I know they're most so bad, but the reason it's behind it is because they don't know. You you educate them a little bit and they'll know what you've told them. And then yeah. um, if people already know about it who are judgmental, which I don't, I don't really know why, because so, it helps so, so, if, if people with autism are uh everyone's different but if they're really um interested in what they're doing they'll want to keep doing it um as much as they can but they everyone's entitled to a break um mm -hmm. but yes yeah, it's, it's it's annoying but hard yeah i wouldn't recommend reading ill to anybody like i just wouldn't it's probably the worst job ever i mean i don't know why i went back to it like, my first proper retail job, I mean, my dad owned a shop for, like, my entire life nearly. So, I mean, I worked in there a few times, which was fine. I mean, whatever. But, like, real retail, like, oh, God. Like, at my worst is when I actually started one of the jobs. And, oh, I quit within two weeks. It was horrible. And it was right before Christmas. I was literally losing it. Yeah. Um. But no, retail is a one to stay away from. I feel like working from home is like the future, mm. no matter what. Like it just, it's so much nicer. I mean, I've worked from home before it was a thing and it was just peaceful. Yeah, it's, it's nice because you, you don't get told off as a certain role. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm kind of my own boss in a way, although I do answer to some people eventually, but it's nice. It's just chill. And every time the group chat pings and I'm, I will go I'm like what's this gonna say but it's usually fine like I'm just whatever <laughs> yeah just go with the flow yeah that's what it's better to be that way now it's just yeah it's nice yeah I guess especially um like like how, how are you with the different seasons like do, do you prefer like winter over summer or do you have like favorites or, or are you just chill um I love spring and I love summer like them are my top I mean winter is probably the worst because I can't stand the cold like I'm sick right now and like, I just can't stand it like I just prefer to be warm and like when everyone was freaking out when it was like 40 degrees where I like where I am like everyone was freaking and I'm like mm, like this is so nice yeah. <laughs> and they're just were like what are you on I'm like hmm yeah, I think yeah. I think it makes us lazy a, a little bit as well because it gets dark early. Um, now uh, still early, and you're like, oh, I don't want to go out. It's, it's gonna get dark in an hour. <laughs> yeah, I, I sometimes like dark nights, but it just depends. I mean, the sun's setting outside my window right now. I mean, it's not very good. I like mm. good sunsets, not like. Just yeah. plain orange. <laughs> yeah, like sometimes if I'm on holiday, if I if, if like um, it was early in the year, I went to Cornwall and I and I stopped somewhere on a hill to take this picture of the sunset, and it, it was it, I, I I like that too. I think it's probably the best part about this time of year, um, like the sunsets and sunrises and, and stuff. yeah, I mean the sunrise this morning what I saw was really nice like it was the first one that I'd seen that was actually nice enough to take a photo of in a while 
Mm. But like others, not so much. Like I feel like there's a lot of orange ones. There's always orange where I am. And I'm like, I've seen enough orange ones. Like It's just orange, orange, orange. I'd rather have like purple again. Like there was a sunset and I think it was on my birthday when I was about 15. I remember it so well. It was literally psychedelic purple and it was pink. It was just the most beautiful thing I've seen. And then another one, which was around that time of year. And it was just like so beautiful. Like it was the most intense ruby red colour. And I've never seen anything like it again. It's a mm. shame, really. Yeah. Purple's one of my favourite colours. So like, I would love to see a purple sunrise, sunset or something. I'll I'll bring it up because it's yeah. it's not that purple because it doesn't like show, but it was like Oh yeah. Was that... that was this morning. Well that's that's a great picture because that was the yeah. sunset in purple. That I think that is great because like it's rare, isn't it? You don't really see that. Yeah. I used to go out all the time and, and it was mostly in summer and me and my friend would just sit on this hill and take loads of photos and I kind of miss that but yeah. life goes on. What what time was that? Like you, you saw that like the purple would you say? I'm not sure. I think it might have been this year, but I've been taking a lot from Google Drive lately. So oh, yeah. I'm not too sure. But it wasn't that long ago I would say. Yeah. It's 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 pretty cool. Like uh, I've never seen the purple one. Um, I see. Like it's nice when you see a rainbow though. But every time I see a rainbow, I just feel like it's gonna rain. <laughs> yeah, the one that I saw, I would say, I think it was September. It was a rainbow at sunset. Like it was so special. And I think there's a photo somewhere of it. I think I saw that one as well. Um, I was it's the day I had my flu jab. <laughs> so I remember <laughs> <That's a movie>. it. <laughs> Yeah, and I, it, it was it was a good picture as well. I, ju I just got it in before it went. Um, yeah, it's a shame because they're not really around. I've probably seen actually more rainbows lately than ever, but not anymore, not this year. No, right, no, I haven't seen any this year, but definitely last year, like around September time, October mm -hmm. time, um, were the, the key month to see some rises and rainbows, but... Um, they are nice. It's it's a good hobby to have. Like you, you just take pictures of it and that. Yeah, the dogs come and join. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, what do you want? Oh, big baby. Yeah. Good big child. Yeah, like um, what do you think? Um, like, lot last few things, Lola. Um, because mm -hmm. I I know your favorite quote from Doctor Who. Like we said before, is Alonzi Alonso. Was that your favourite time of Doctor Who? Like within the David Tennant? Yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably say David Tennant because that's what I grew up with and that was like the first that I watched. But I really do love old Who as well. Like I, I can't even like pinpoint who is like the best. Like it's specifically episodes for me, like ones that stand out. Like Remembrance of the Daleks has got to be one of my favourite Dalek episodes ever. I don't know why, but it just is. I think it's like, I think it's down to like the music and the cinematography and just the design of the Daleks. I just love how they're arguing because the different colours essentially. Yeah, yeah, I I do like the the different coloured Daleks. I want a purple Dalek. I've never seen a purple Dalek. <laughs> no, I haven't seen one either. I used to have one of the remote control ones, like the very retro ones, and. I miss it so much. Like I thought it might be up in my in my dad's loft when he moved house, and it wasn't. It's long gone. Yeah, I used to have a canine. Wait, I had it like a canine where you can control it and stuff. Um, I think I might have had canine as well. I'm, I'm pretty sure I did. I don't. I, I, there's photos of it somewhere. There has to be. Yeah, uh, like um, it, it 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 like my favorite episode is the girl in the fireplace. Um. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I just like the music. That's one of the reasons I like it. I I just like mm. the music in in Doctor Who. Um, yeah, I d I couldn't even say like a favorite episode really. Like yeah. it just depends on the time. But if I'm having like a really bad time of like things, and I just want some no nostalgia, I will literally always go for Voyage of the Damned because I don't know that was the first Christmas special that I ever saw. 
Yeah. And plus, I actually know people like who might have a photo behind us, but like one of the actors in it, like I met him last year. Or so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is a good episode. Um, it is. Um, it's a shame at the end what happened, but <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I was so like I loved Kylie as a kid. That was kind of like the music that I was raised on, and I was traumatized. Yeah, yeah. Like when I watched it, I, I didn't realize it was actually Kylie Minogue at the time, um, because she looked very really different. Um, but. It's it's good when they have like guest stars in there, like mm -hmm. in, in Doctor Who. I, I I love that. Um, yeah, I I think they'll probably go back to that and have like really good guest stars again. Well, I hope they will. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. I reckon. Like uh, I, I love it. Like it's been like a hobby of mine since last year. Really, I I went I went to different Doctor Who locations, like where they were filmed and that. Um, mm -hmm. because as well as like. People go to these conventions and, and meet the actors and that. It, it's good to go to places uh, where it, it was actually filmed there. And it's good even if people don't like Doctor Who, actually, because it's just nice places to visit. Yeah, I've I've probably never, like, done that because I've never really been more south than north. I've only been, I'd probably say, to the south twice in my life, yeah. as far as I can tell. Yeah. It's very far. Quite far for me. Yeah, it's, it's quite far for me. Like it's about five hours, I think, to it would wow. get to, to get to the place. But I did just go there and and, and look at it and go home. I stayed for a few days, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, which I plan to do again this year because I just I was only a few days. Well, I got mm -hmm. a lot in, but I want to stand there like a week and go to specific ones that I didn't get to, or go back to ones that I didn't spend long enough. But yeah. It's... I mean, I've been to a few sets and stuff like that, but not always, like, I don't know. I just don't think I appreciated it as much then, but I don't, I don't know. I just felt like it wasn't a big deal in a way. Yeah. Like, it's just one of them things. Like, I wanted it really badly as a kid. Like, I'd be, like, begging to go places. And then it's just, like, when you look back, you're like, it really wasn't actually worth the hype. Like, I went to Corrie. I went to the Corrie set before they knocked it down. And I think that was, like, 2013. But it's just, like, meh. Like, it's not so memorable in a way. Like, I don't, like, I don't really remember it. And that's, like, when you know that it wasn't as good as you thought because you should remember. I mean, I went to Waterloo Road in Scotland. And, yeah, I mean, that was a pretty good day from what I can remember. Yeah. But, like... Eh, it could have been better, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, stupid me. Every time that I do certain things, I'm like, why did I not think of taking selfies? People are like, no, you didn't. I'm like, I've got a photo of me against, like, where it says Waterloo Road, but I haven't got any with the actors I met. There's a video, but, you know. Yeah, it is, it is cool when you go to this stuff. Like, um, I was late on Waterloo Road when I actually watched it. I, I watched it when it was locked down. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, because it was on BBC, what I, BBC I played, I thought, I've never seen that before. Give it a watch, and then I liked it, and then it's on again now. So, um, I didn't miss the t 10 or so years that they missed, or the old I had a break from it. But mm -hmm. um, but from what I know, from what, like, I, I was near, I think, Coronation Street set, and I, I was going to give it a visit, but then I look at pictures, and they don't look that advertising to me to, to go and look at, um, because... I think it said you couldn't go in the pub or or, or something, um. So I I you couldn't. It, it didn't look that big either. So it probably won't took long to go around. Yeah, I remember when I like vaguely that in it was Granada Studios, which was the original set, and they were like, you can't, you couldn't video, you couldn't take photos of any of the inside of the set. Like, they had just moved the set. Like, what's the difference? Oh, wow, the sky's just turned nice. Um, Like, I'm like, what is the difference? They're not going to use that set again. So, like, taking a few photos isn't going to, like, do anything. Actually, I've got a photo up there of me and my grandma and my mum in the Rover's Return. Wow. But, like, yeah, <laughs> it just, it wasn't a big deal. Like, it's just, like, yeah. I people are overly remember. strict. Yeah. I, I remember going to a Doctor Who experience as a kid. And 
you weren't allowed to take pictures of the TARDIS or anything in there, which was which was a shame because well, you had photo opportunities in there where you could be like flying out the TARDIS, like mm-hmm. lot lot like in the TARDIS pictures and, sh- uh, and 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 stuff like that. Um, but it's it's really interesting to to go to these places, but like and not have pictures. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's it's a weird one. Like you just don't understand the deal. Like it just doesn't make that much difference, really. Like one photo here and there. Like, yeah, who's it gonna harm? Yeah, because I I remember going to the Harry Potter one as well when I was younger, and it was only when uh, the actor who played Hagrid died that I looked back at the photos that that I had at the experience. I, I thought, oh my god, like, I was so young. I, I was on the broomstick and everything like that, and mm-hmm. uh, it's it, it was like, it's cool to look back at photos that I had. Like, it, it weren't any photos that I had just took. It was like the ones that you that you would just get if you were there, like if you were sitting on a broomstick, um, like CGI and stuff. Mm-hmm. Which is it's cool. It's cool to go to these places, but um, yeah, I I just wish I I, I want to do it more now, but they don't now. Maybe for example, Doctor Who will bring stuff like that back because it's kind of a new era now, isn't it? So that that's nice. Yeah, I think there's actually a Doctor Who museum somewhere. I think that might actually be in Scotland. I keep seeing things of it, and I'm like, right. I'm like, I've never heard of that before. But there's nothing where I am. There's like literally nothing that special. So yeah, I I I did go to that museum when I when it was in Liverpool because I think it was in Liverpool, and then it changed to go to Scotland, Edinburgh. Um, oh, um, I didn't know that. And I, I, I the, the only annoying thing I find is that in the Scotland Museum that they have the 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 the, uh, the clothes that David Tennant, Fourteenth Doctor's wearing, and Donna, uh, mm-hmm. Catherine Tate's wearing, but they didn't have that, of course, in Liverpool because they wasn't announced then. So yeah, uh, um, or they was announced, but they they have everything already in there, so they don't want to change it. Um, mm-hmm. but it's good fun. I spent I spent lots of money in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> in in the little shop um but it, it's a good time it, uh, it it's not as good as maybe the the doctor experience as is but it, it's good if you like stuff like that or you're interested in it yeah i mean hopefully i'll get to do some stuff like that but i don't know i'll just wait and see what life brings us i guess wait and see what's around the corner yeah i mean i have no idea like I'm becoming friends with actors, and that's kind of a scary prospect to even think about. I'm like, how did this happen? Yeah. But yeah, no. I mean, that's, that's where cool. like making them connections is where things can take you. Yeah, yeah, it could be in Cory in the next ten years. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't. I would literally like. I'm that person who will forever stay away from soaps, no matter how bad it gets. Like. That can either like build up your career and make you famous, or they can make your career dead. Essentially. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of that. Like, I I used to watch them when I was ten, perhaps, uh, just because it was on, and uh, everyone in my house loves watching sites. But um, I don't watch anymore because it's just really repetitive, and I don't like it when it's just maybe the story goes on for too long. Yeah, I feel like they have no choice because they've got to get that many episodes out that they'll just be like, yeah, let's just do this. Yeah, yeah. I I like when a series is not on every day of the week as well because you feel like, oh, I've got, I've got to catch up, I've got to catch up, I've got to catch up. I miss something, I missed it. And then I come to the point where it doesn't really matter now if you miss a, an episode now, it, it will just get brought up in a future episode anyway. So Yeah, I mean, I started watching Emmerdale, I would say when it was the anniversary and I'm like okay I'm like I'm gonna continue watching this nah I gave up like I realized that I was one episode behind and then it became too many and I was like, yeah. Yeah. like who I... cares same with Corrie yeah I was like oh well what a shame yeah I, I I watched EastEnders on Christmas Day because nothing was on and I, I the last time I watched that was when Lucy was in it and, and she died years ago yeah and, I remember and... that and the reason I stopped watching it was partly because of that, because it was ridiculous. Like, you spend a year, maybe even two years, find out who killed Lucy, and then you find out it was the little brother. And I thought that was a bit of a lame kind of ending. And then I thought, yeah. I'm not watching it anymore. So I watch it for the first time since then. And then it's when um how um 
the 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 guy from the Vic, um, he he supposedly gets killed off, and I thought mm. it was really bad, and um, I I didn't think it was great. Um, I I don't know the storyline behind it. I think a lot of mental health awareness went into that, which mm-hmm. was good, which uh, I got told, but it wasn't great. Um, really. Um, but that's just me. I, I like. I'm not a fan of soaps anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm yeah. kind of like I just watch mostly American shows now because yeah. it's a lot easier. I mean, I didn't have a TV for like a long time. Well, I had a TV, but it didn't work for like normal channels. So I just use my Fire Stick, and I've used it for like years. Like I'm always gonna probably use that over anything yeah. else. Yeah, I love the Fire Stick. You can watch anything. Um, yeah, like it's it's so much easier to watch maybe things from American shows if you like American shows. Um, mm-hmm. Because I, I like American shows probably better than UK shows. Um, really. Yeah, I feel like they've got a, one, a bigger budget, and two, they've got more time to actually like write things yeah. and take time for it. They do. They do. I think it, it, it's really good. Like, um, like I've, I, 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 I recently started watching the, that Last of Us series, which. Everyone's is quite hyped at the moment, um, and like maybe me because I I'm a night owl, so I will watch it when it airs in America mm-hmm. time. I, I like I, I I like doing that, and uh, I'm I'm pretty crazy to be honest because um, I don't know I I'm a lot I'm a night owl, but I like watching late night shows um and stuff, which which is cool. <laughs> Yeah, I'm usually asleep, but I know when it drops. I know that most of them drop at eight a.m. here. Mm. on whatever software that I end up using and I'm just like, I'm like this is good. Yeah. I feel like that's when you know this is like I don't know, this is just something about that where you're like, yes, I'm first to it in the UK and then you've got everyone else waiting like four months or even longer. <laughs> and you're like, and they're yeah. like, how come you get to watch that? I'm like, you do realise that there's this thing called the internet and that's yeah. where everything gets dropped. Yeah. Yeah, you, 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 like I, I always like that when you can watch something earlier than than maybe so, maybe someone else. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's it's not it's annoying to wait, especially like if you watch a series and they do it in two parts. Like you have episodes launching on February and then you got to wait till March for the the last part. I think why can't I just release it all at once? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know one of the shows that I watched that came out maybe November or potentially December. And you've got to wait till July, like for part two, and you're like, really? You really doing that one? Like, how is anybody meant to remember between then and then? Like, especially when there's like sometimes two years between them being released in each series. So, yeah, it's crazy how they just get these out, and it takes a year for like, like you say, two years maybe for the next series. And I, I don't watch it anymore because I've forgotten what happened. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just, I don't get it sometimes, oh, wow, the sky's turned all different colours out there. But um, I just don't get how long it takes. I think it must be down to the actors, mostly availability rather than anything else. Yeah. Because I know for a fact to film one episode, it takes about one to two weeks. So assuming they don't really have long series now. So you're talking about maybe 16 weeks yeah. for an entire series season whatever people want to call it but yeah yeah it's About just three like months sometimes. Longer. yeah so I don't know. yeah it's crazy yeah, it's definitely crazy but uh before we go lola do, do, do you have any like advice for for people that have autism or all people who are undiagnosed with with anything maybe like just to finish off just keep going just like a lot of people be like oh like why you still go and just give up but the truth is you never know what's coming next because like I know that I would have gave up on certain things and I wouldn't be here like essentially like there's always something to keep going for um and also don't listen to the haters because they are clearly boring they're just boring like like why there's so many haters like I know I've got some Hmm. yeah it's just like really like why do people spend the time doing that just like do what you want to do and just like live your life and 
etc etc i'm more like a person who posts all this stuff on instagram when i get inspired <laughs> yeah good way to be good way to be um but yeah. i great great advice i think i think it's really great um and to anyone who's seen this episode i hope you enjoy it and also like lila will be on like there's, 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 there's later this year for the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who, there's going to be a, a series for for that um people with autism and people who don't have autism um that it's going to I'm going to call it Doctor and Autism celebrations because mm-hmm. it is a celebration um so celebrate both things in a way I guess but yeah mm-hmm. uh, I look forward to doing that with you later but uh but yeah I'm I hope you've enjoyed today on coming on the yeah podcast. how it's been fun yeah well thanks Lola. And thanks to anyone who's seen this, and we hope you enjoy it as well. <laughs> yeah. Or I don't know why I always say au revoir. <laughs> <laughs> au revoir. <laughs>